What are logic gates and why would you care? A logic gate is the fundamental building block of how digital computers work. By understanding these, you will be able to better understand how digital circuits and computers work. For makers, that means understanding how you can make the most of digital outputs on a Raspberry Pi or Arduino. In later videos, I'll be covering combinational logic circuits, sequential logic circuits, and some circuits that bridge the gap between analog and digital. If you want to know more, then subscribe to this channel, Penguin Tutor, and click on the notification icon to be notified when new videos come out. Before we look at logic gates, first a very short recap on what digital electronics is and why it's so important. You can think of digital and analog by looking at an example in your own home. Your light switch. Most light switches are rocker switches. You push it one way and the light turns on, push it the other way and the light turns off. This is a digital on off switch, simple enough. This compares with analog dimmer switch where you can vary the brightness based on how far you twist the dial. This is analog. The real world is analog, so why are computers digital? Some computers have been made that are analog, such as the one shown here, which is at the National Museum of Computing at Bletchley Park but they never really took off. It was found that it was easier, cheaper and more reliable to create digital computers. Digital computers are based upon the original principles of Boolean algebra, which is named after George Boole who wrote about this in a book, The Mathematical Analysis of Logic in 1847, well before electronic computers were invented. By combining multiple signals, known as bits, a computer can represent information as binary numbers within the computer. In digital circuitry, we consider each bit as either on or off, which is often referred to as high or low, or one and zero. Here you can see symbols for digital logic gates. The symbols on diagrams are not normally in 3D or as colourful, but otherwise these represent typical symbols. The colour is added to make these look a bit more interesting. Towards the end of the video, you will get to see what they look like on a regular schematic diagram. These symbols represent small circuits which perform Boolean logic operations. Although mathematical in nature, these use English words to explain their function, such as not, and, and or. These will be explained one at a time. This is the logical not gate. It is the simplest of the logic gates, having one input and one output. The output is the opposite of the input, so the output is not the same as the input. This is also known as an inverter. The symbol is a triangle followed by a small circle. The circle is significant as without that the logic symbol would represent a non-inverted buffer. You will also see that circle crop up later. If you place the logic 0 or a low on the input then the output gives the logic 1 or a high value. We can store this in a table known as a truth table. If we call the input A and the output X, then the first entry will look like this. Then, if the input is changed to 1, the output goes to 0. Again, that can be added to the truth table. As we have only one input and one output, that's the truth table complete. The next logic gate is the AND gate. The AND gate will give a positive output which is a logic 1, only if the inputs A and B are both at 1. Assuming the inputs are labelled A and B and the output is X, again we can build the truth table. With A and B both at 0, then the output is 0. With A at 0 and B at 1, then the output is still 0. The same with A at 1 and B at 0, the output is still 0. The only time there is a 1 output from this gate is when both A and B are at 1. This diagram shows the 2 input AND gate, which is very common, but it's also possible to get AND gates with multiple inputs. In that case, the output is only ever 1 if all the inputs are at 1. So for example, with a 4 input AND gate, it will only have a 1 output if A is 1 and B is 1, C is 1 and D is at 1. This is the OR gate. This gives a high output 
whenever input A or B is high. So again, filling in the truth table, if A and B are both zero, then the output is zero. If B is one, then even if A is zero, one of the inputs is one, so the output is one. If A is one, then that's the same. Even with B as zero, then the output is again one. Finally, if both A and B are one, then the output is one. So as I said earlier, this is high if A or B are at one. As with the AND gate, you can also get OR gates with multiple inputs, in which case, as long as one or more inputs are at one, then the output will be one. The next is the XOR, or exclusive OR gate. This will give a one output when one of the inputs is exclusively at one. So if either A or B are one, but the other is at zero, then it will give a one. If both A and B are at one, then it will give a zero. This will be clearer when working through the example. When both inputs are zero, then neither A or B are one, so the output is zero. When B is one, but A is zero, then only one of the inputs is at one, so the output is one. When A is one and B is zero, then again, only one of the inputs is at one, so the output is one. So far, just like an OR gate. But when A and B are both one, then the exclusivity is not met, and so the output is zero. Finally, we can look at NAND and NOR gates. These are an abbreviation for NOT AND, which is an AND gate with a NOT at the output, and NOT OR, which is an OR gate with a NOT at the output. As you can see from the symbols, they are the same as the respective AND and OR symbols, but they have added the circle from the NOT gate, which I mentioned earlier. These are significant for two reasons. The first being that when logic gates were first created as integrated circuits, then it was easier to make the NAND and NOR gates compared to the AND and OR gates. Also, the other reason is that you can make any other kind of gate from just one type of these. So, using just NAND gates, you could make any other gate. Or, if you preferred, using just NOR gates, you can also make any other type of gate. You could argue that with modern fabrication processes, and more specialised integrated circuits, instead of just using traditional logic ICs, these are no longer such a concern, but it's also the building blocks of other digital circuits, which will become apparent in a future video when looking at flip-flops. The NAND gate is the same as the AND gate, but with the output inverted. So, where the AND gate would have provided a zero output, the NAND gate gives a one. Where the AND gate gave a one, the NAND gate gives a zero. This is shown in the truth table. The same principle applies for the NOR gate. The output from the OR gate is inverted, so a zero becomes a one, and a one becomes a zero. As you can see from the truth table, it only gives a one output when A and B are both zero. The same can be applied to the exclusive OR gate, which is known as an XNOR gate. Hopefully the visuals have helped to make this easy to understand. But when creating circuit designs, the symbols are a little less vibrant. There are also different symbols depending upon different standards. This will look at two symbols, one of which shows the shapes that we've been using so far in this video. The other is a rectangular shape regardless of the type of gate. The symbols with different shapes are perhaps the easiest to spot from a distance but the rectangular ones have the advantage that the writing makes the symbol non-ambiguous. You will likely see both in real circuits, so I've included them both here. The NOT gate is either a triangle followed by a circle, or a rectangle followed by a circle. The rectangular symbol uses a 1 to indicate that the input to the output of the rectangular block is the same, but then the circle indicates that it is inverted. On some symbols, there is a line instead of the circle, forming a right angle triangle on the output. The rectangular version of the AND gate uses an ampersand character. This is to represent that the output is 1 only if both A and B are 1. The rectangular symbol for the OR gate uses a greater than or equal to 1 symbol. 
This indicates that as long as at least one input is one, then the output will also be one. The rectangular version of the exclusive OR gate has an equals to one on it. Note this is different from the NOT gate which had just one with no equal sign. Also this has two inputs instead of one. Finally, the NAND and NOR symbols are the same as the respective AND and OR symbols but with the addition of a circle on the output. Or in some cases, instead of a circle, there is a line which forms a small rectangle on the output instead. These different logic gates are available on logic integrated circuits. These integrated circuits usually have a single type of logic gate, but can vary from only one gate to many gates depending upon the number of inputs to the logic gate and the number of pins on the integrated circuit. It is, however, more common to use these as building blocks into more complicated circuits or as the basic building blocks in creating computers. The next video will look at combining some of these logic gates to create combinational logic circuits. In particular, it will look at the adder circuit, which is an important operation in microcontrollers and computers. Then, a future video will also cover sequential logic, including flip-flops, registers and shift registers. If these videos are popular, then I'll look at adding some more videos on digital electronics in future. So please subscribe to my channel to get notified of new videos. If there's something you'd like me to cover on future videos, either on digital electronics or any other digital maker topic, please let me know in the comments. If you found this useful, you may like my book, Learning Electronics with Raspberry Pi by Stuart Watkiss, published by A-Press.